With all the changes here in Season 11, there is no better time to step back and really look for the weaknesses in your game that you can improve on. From the addition of Stormpoint to all the weapon changes and the addition of Ash, there have been an absolute ton of changes to how to best play the game. What's up guys, it's Valued, and today we're going to walk through some of the easiest ways that you can improve fast in Season 11. But per usual, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. First, let's talk about your game knowledge and how it impacts your improvement. The information we have about Apex and how that info is best used in its current state is something we should all know if we want to perform at our best. When you want to improve, you need to understand the best practices to do given the certain strength of legends, weapons, landing spots, and so much more. This is often referred to as the meta and is the best way to play the game. And while it's never a perfectly defined thing, there is usually a playstyle or two that work the best in every single season. Understanding that in Season 11 takes a lot of time, and learning how to actually play like the meta encourages takes even more time. But let's touch really quick on an example of how you should be looking at the game to ensure you're setting yourself up for success. When you look at the weapons being used here on Stormpoint, many players are going for long-range weapons with a pocket shoddy or SMG. And this makes sense. When talking about Stormpoint, it's hard not to discuss how long-range and open some of these areas truly are. If you have a deep understanding of Stormpoint, you could easily devise that long-range weapons are gonna be strong. But if you have a long-range weapon, where is your biggest weakness? Close range. This means you need to take a second weapon to cover for this weakness, right? And in come the newly buffed shotguns and the still strong SMGs. This is a simple example, but what I'm trying to point out here is that you'll find the strongest way to play the game and find success if you have a deep understanding of the game. From knowing what weapons are strong, to what legends are good, to how those weapons and legends interact with a newly added map and all the little nooks and crannies of that map, these things help you become a better player and have a better understanding of how to play the game from top to bottom. Alongside your game knowledge, there is one thing you can't ignore if you want to become a truly great player, your mechanics. From aiming to movement and every input in between, being fluid in-game relies on your mechanics. We all need improvement in this regard as it's a never-ending grind to become as good as we can be, but let's touch on a few quick recommendations to improve quickly. Now, for most of us, the firing range is probably your best friend. Make sure you're using it regularly, keeping your reps up on the weapons at all times. Have you been missing a few too many flatline shots, or maybe you're just not 100% confident on a certain weapon yet? Well, then get into the firing range and shoot some dummies so you can feel comfortable with the mechanics of the game. Because feeling comfortable with every aspect of this game is key if you want to perform when you drop out of the ship. One of the biggest aspects of these mechanics is your aim. And guys, let me tell you, the fastest way to dial in your aim and get comfortable above the firing range is with Aim Lab. There's so many reasons why Aim Lab is such a great game, but the biggest two in my books are the feedback they give you, showing you exactly where your weaknesses are in your aim, and the ability to replay certain exercises over and over until you master things like tracking with a flatline and flicking with the shotguns. Seriously guys, Aim Lab is a blast and I personally recommend giving it a try, so check it out in the description below. After getting your aim perfectly dialed in with Aim Lab, you can use the firing range to practice all of your movement. I like to run Aim Lab for 5 to 10 minutes and then spend a few minutes in the firing range warming up my slide jumps, B hops, wall bounces, and strafing. It's really important to get these reps in before hopping into games because those first few shots or moves you make when you drop could mean life or death. It's important to be comfortable doing at least the basics of movement like slide jumping and manipulating your momentum comfortably in game. The firing range is the perfect spot to get those reps in without worrying about getting beamed by enemies while you work on your dance moves. And if you find that you're not improving, one of the best ways to improve and get in game practice is solo no fill pubs. Seriously, this is still my biggest recommendation for getting good in fights and gaining confidence in yourself as a player. If you can get to a point where you're constantly winning fights solo, not only can you be confident in your aim, movement, and other mechanics, but you're also getting more practice on the maps and gaining a ton of game sense as you practice this way. 
Playing No Fills gives you that deep understanding of all the timings and options that you actually have inside of fights because you have nothing to focus on but yourself, staying alive, and killing your opponents. By putting yourself in tough situations over and over again, you'll become a lot more resourceful and get really good at kiting out enemies in fights and just playing your life in general. No matter how good you get, this is one of the best ways to really put yourself in a tough testing environment and a lot of pros do this on the daily. So when it comes to improvement, analyzing your games is very important. Once you feel like you have a deep understanding for the game and how to find success, this is where the real reflection comes into play. You need to be able to be self-critical of yourself and use the knowledge you have and are constantly gaining to improve your play. This is the hardest step of improvement because it's all on you and your mentality. While we all need to continue to practice our mechanics and our game knowledge, once we rotate back, shore those up, most of our improvement will rely on our ability to be self-critical in our own gameplay. So, you should record situations where you died and watch them back, taking your time to figure out everything that you could have done better. Now, you don't have to work on everything at once, as we all have many things we can improve on. But, if you die in a situation where you felt you shouldn't have, watch it back and try to figure out what aspects of your play you can actually control, and what you would do differently if you were in that spot the next time. Rather than blaming your teammates or RNG, look closely at your games and try to find something that you could have done better. Because guys, I'm going to break it to you. Every one of us, including me, can do something better in almost every situation. Whether it's aiming, movement, rotating, decision making, something can be improved from almost every single situation, even if you win the game. Here are some examples. Were you too far from your team? Did you linger at a camp and get third party? Or maybe you dropped too hot and had a terrible start to your game. All three of these examples show you there's always something that you could have done better, even if your teammates literally run in and die instantly. Every game you play, focus on what you can control and always look for things to improve on, even if a ton of stuff happens that you couldn't control. Every one of us, including me, has a ton of improvement to do, so be honest if you aren't very good with a certain gun or you're losing close range fights, and go practice those things in particular. Or if you're over peeking in fights and getting killed quickly, then focus on that in particular for your next few games. Between solo no fills, the firing range, aim labs, and your own VOD reviews, you have all the tools that you need to become a top level player. It's just a matter of using them, and that's why a lot of pros are where they are today. So, all the tools you have at your disposal are here to dial you in mechanically, but also to dial in your decision making. What you choose to do in a game is what separates most players from the Preds and Pro players. And constantly looking for those alternative decisions that could have made a difference in your losses is the absolute key. There's no one good way to go about a certain play, but being conscious of the decisions that you have and making an effort to always make the right ones will lead you to coming out on top much more in your games. Deciding whether to third party or get better ring position, rotate away for more loot or towards some action on the map, or deciding if you should push that enemy you cracked in the distance. All of these and an infinite number of more decisions will come up as you're grinding and constantly looking closely at what decisions you made and what decisions you could have made will have you improving faster than everyone around you. The key to constantly improving your decision making is to be self-critical. You don't want to fall into the trap of blaming your teammates or the loot gods for your poor game, but rather always taking on some sort of blame and improving. Our decision making only improves if we can find weaknesses in it, so stay humble and keep a close eye on how you're playing your games. For example, we all know that you should focus on rotating first and fighting second, right? Well, at least I hope so. But how many times do we all find ourselves getting stuck with the zone on our heels or dying in an early fight in a game? Whether you're dying due to poor rotations, overextending in fights, no matter the mistake, your VODs have evidence of all of it. And I know a lot of us already notice this stuff in the moment, whether we realize it or not. You'd be surprised how many mistakes are in all of our gameplay if we keep an improvement mindset. Not only do you have to make incredible decisions for yourself, you also need to find ways of communicating that to your squad. If you really want to push a team or rotate away from them, calm that to your squad, and even throw in some pings if they aren't active in comms. 
Now, I know, we can all get stuck with some pretty rough teammates, but even in solo queue, it's always better to communicate proactively with them because it betters your chances at finding success. If you just go at it alone and don't listen to your teammates comms or pings or never communicate to them in any way, a lot of your plays are going to fail. Even if you made the right decision, odds are if you're doing it alone, it won't go very well for you in most situations. It's hard to make rotations together at all if there's literally no communication. So any sort of ping or information you share with your squad is incredibly valuable, especially if you're playing alone. So do your best to keep your teammates on the same page and if they're being proactive about communicating, just go with the flow. Remember, having everyone making a bad play together is usually better than making a good play alone. Now, guys, keep in mind, improving is a personal journey, and any amount of improvement is worth getting pumped about. No matter where you find yourself in skill right now, if you break down your game and really put in the effort, you can become so much better. Follow the examples and mindsets that I talked about today, and your Apex goals are more reachable than you actually think. Let me know in the comments below what aspect of your game you've been trying to improve, and drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Anyway, guys, it's been your boy Valued, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.